I'm at the lunch break of a uh, two-day seminar, second day, about asset-based uh, community developments in Manchester. And uh, we had a terrific presentation from Jim Dyers in the morning. And uh, after that, people have been asked to talk about the practicalities of making connections in their communities by talking about uh, my bumping spaces and uh, what I might want to learn and uh, what I might want to teach and then also my social networks. And as you can see, this has produced stacks of post-it notes, but there's some creative work going on here. So I'm going to ask a couple of people that are involved to tell me what they're doing. Hi, can I just pass the microphone over for a moment? And te sorry, tell me who you are, why you're here, and what are you doing? Hi, I'm Cathy Elliott. I'm from the Community Foundation for Merseyside in Lancashire. And um, my colleague and I, actually, we don't even know each other's names. <laughs> My name's Karina Milner and I'm a community mobiliser in Milton Keynes, so I'm not local. <laughs> so what are you doing with the post-it notes, the bits of string? We are connecting people, so now we know what people want to learn and we know what people want to teach, so the string is connecting those people up, very visually. So what we're doing is particularly clustering everybody. There's lots of people that want to do DIY, there's lots of people that want to learn to cook, improve their language skills, and then we're trying to cluster it so that we can then connect it with the people that want to teach and actually try and make some connections happen in the room. Great, can I borrow the microphone back just a moment and um, ask about what um, you think this will mean in practice on the ground? Because uh, both Jim and Cormac have been talking about a positive asset-based approach to community development rather than starting with the needs and the problems, start with the good stuff that's already happening. Um, how's that going to play out, do you think? Um, I think from our point of view, we've been talking with an organisation about trying to make this happen. We, have, we work with a lot of donors and companies that have skills to offer and they think it's about painting walls and we know that they've got great, great skills. And we work with a lot of community groups that need support and can offer other things. So this whole exercise shows us how we can do this within our organisation and we're thinking of turning this into an online exchange. Mobiliser, a mobiliser, we're quite different. What's the, what's the difference between well, a mobiliser and an organiser? An organiser will come from some kind of perspective, an agenda possibly, more of a lobbying type of angle. We don't come with an agenda, we come, we work with the community and their agendas and their journey, so we work at their pace and we just help them, give them the tools to maybe speed the journey up a little bit and take out some blockages and just help them do what they want to do in their community. And we've actually done this with residents and volunteers and it's a very powerful tool because they're often very um, humble about their abilities and when they see this out in front of them like that, it's very powerful and they suddenly realise what they can do and actually just asking some very simple questions can be very powerful. So is this community networking and community building at the heart of what you do? And um, if so, where are you finding the kind of inspiration, learning, people that have done it before, or is this all new territory? Uh, the Mobilizers Service has been running for about seven years, and we've always followed this approach, so we're very on board with this. Um, I've only been doing it for two years, but it's been drummed into me um, from day one. So uh, this is it, this is at the heart of how we work, really, um, and it's just getting this across to people. And I think, like a lot of other people in the room, as soon as they see it out in front of them, they start to understand the approach and get on board with the approach. And that's essentially what we do on a very local grassroots level with our residents. <laughs> And uh, you find this creates more positive uh, enthusiasm in the community than starting from what's the problem? Definitely. You will still come across the issue by talking about what assets you have, but then there's already a, a change mentality about what their responsibility is to that issue rather than locking on local authority door and having that mentality of you fix it, I have this issue, you fix it. If you come from an asset-based stance from the get-go they're already thinking about well, how, what's their responsibility in it all.